oh boy, the hottest dude in the podcast game, Sebastian Canelli. And as always, per usual, we got the cute boy here himself, Robbie Boy. <laughs> Say hello to the beautiful people, Robbie. <laughs> Today we come to you with the most highest <laughs> gossip of the royalist events. For we <laughs> are here to define the ages and be here before the people. It is I, Sebastian Provolon, <laughs> of the of the Staten Island family, Connelly. And I'm here sitting here with the cutest boy in all of the land. <laughs> Robbie boy. <laughs> Robbie, please say hello to the Beautiful guests that we have joining hello, us today. Hello, 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 hello. The most, beautiful guests. And you are cordially <laughs> invited to this episode of Loud About Nothing. Okay, slots, you know what time it is. <laughs> that was good. That was very good. Ooh, it's not one of my favorite accents, <laughs> but of course, when the season is upon us. <laughs> We must do the Bridgerton season. <laughs> now, here's the question. Okay, now we're hitting it. Do I look more like a Bridgerton or a carnival man? <laughs> <laughs> a Bridgerton. I think you fit in well. You do? Yeah. I don't think a carny would have white gloves. Amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> or I, the tie. With the tie, of course. Or that. All in my closet. All in your closet. Of course. Of nice. Um... What's up, fam? What's up, folks? <laughs> I can't freaking do that the whole episode. You can't, but it's good. You do a good job. Absolutely, Robbie. Is she your favorite character, Lady Whistledown? Okay, the let's The one just, with the T? Let's tell the people before we start. Okay. One, she's... Uh, I got a lot of thoughts, okay? Okay, you have a lot of thoughts. Here we go, people. We're doing it. We're going to do a little Bridgerton. Okay. Now, why? Because I like it. <laughs> Because I um, like it. I, I watch this. This is one of the shows I watch in bed. I go, ooh. Okay. <laughs> I go, ah. You're I'll, excited. I'll make noises like dudes do when they watch basketball games during Bridgerton. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll like, I'm in it. What's what's the T? The T is. All right. So is it, we're going to get spoilers? I'm cool with spoilers. Okay. Well, first I off, don't know if I'm going to tell, tell the people. Yeah. What's I'll, going I'll tell on. you a little about, a bit about my experience before I jump into spoilers. Okay. No spoilers yet. No spoilers yet, people. You're safe. If you haven't watched it yet, watch it. It's a fun show. The first season was all <laughs> horny. The second season was about real love. The second season was a love story, man. I saw a two minute cap, <sighs> recap, because I started episode season three yeah. uh the other so night. you watched the recap so i watched the recap two minutes of is season not enough. two yeah two minutes which is... all right i guess spoiler alert Spo okay. it's about somebody gets arranged to marry someone else and they fall in love with their sister thank you robbie yeah that was what it was about it's enemies to lovers is the story enemies to lovers because they're enemies and then they fall into lovers and they can't be together and there is nothing hotter maybe i should watch there is nothing. What do you? What, what do you have? Enemies that you want to be with? No, I, I have a lot of tension in my life. Well, that seems like what that plays with tension. That's a big element. It's the second season is all about the tension. Okay. It is truly. I can't do this. I need to be there for my family. I need to be a, a all the honor and respect in my family. I cannot give into this. I cannot give into love for you. Okay. But the love was too strong. It always is. That he had to give in. It always is. It, you know what, Robbie? It always isn't. You in a story, so? it is. In, in life. In real life, you don't think it is. Nah. People yeah, give I up their true right. love for a union job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If the love so, is real. If the love is real. Well, oh, I, 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 okay. Continue. Well, here's the thing. So for me, for Bridgerton watching it, just so people know, I watch it all on the first day. I, I watched um, from like 11 o'clock to one in the morning. And then I said, okay, Sebastian, you should go to bed. You know, you should go head to bed. And I said, Sebastian, if you truly want to watch this show, I was like, I don't want to go to bed. It's like, Sebastian, it's time for bed, but I don't want to. And I said, Sebastian, if you truly want to watch a show, you will wake up two hours before you have responsibilities in the morning, two hours earlier. Wow, you did that? 7 a.m. You woke up at 7 a.m. to up finish at Bridgerton. 7 a.m. so I could watch. I started the, the day last two episodes. with the last two episodes of Bridgerton straight into straight into Bridgerton woke up. Okay. It was it was a morning. I had a morning. And I'll tell you this, 
it ends in a very sexy way. Okay, I saw. I heard there was a cliffhanger. Not a cliffhanger. It's more. It's more of okay. like it something big way. happened, okay. and it's like, what's gonna go? What's you know? There okay. was a big plot point. Okay. That we all were waiting for. Um. And it, okay. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some. So specifics. there's spoilers. Spoiler alert. Don't worry, we have chapters. Um, we have, you could skip uh, to the next chapter if you, you want to watch Bridgerton if and you, haven't. If you would like to watch Bridgerton, uh, skip to the next chapter. If not, mm-hmm. stick around. Here's my points on. Uh, here's some thoughts I have on Bridgerton. Bridgerton. So there's this fellow. Um, first off, I watched the series and the the new romantic lead, the male one, right? He um, he clearly like got uh, like his lips done and got a tan. Okay. So he I'm looks a, different. Yeah, he did. He got. To, I watched season one, and then I saw the first twenty got minutes of flip. season three, and he does look different. He got a lip flip and, and a, tan. a tan. Yeah. Okay. And I'm on fucking Amazon looking up bro tan. <laughs> uh, I think I might do self tanner. Somebody sent me. Somebody sent me self tanner. In the mail? No, they sent me. Well, somebody sent me. My friend works at Speedo, and she sent me a bunch of Speedo equipment. A lot of it just to like swim at the pool, and she sent me one brief, and she was like, "When you're ready, I want to pick." She want, is that a flirt? I don't think so. I think so. I mean, we're not. She's my friend from back in the day. I don't. I don't okay. think it. She lives in. She's. It's. I don't think it's that. It's, Maybe we flirt. Who knows? Okay. I flirt as in just regular flirt. But she sent me some good self tanning, and she oh, said she that said this would help. Yeah, she said I just do self tanning and put it in, mix it in with my lotion every day, and I look amazing. Dude, I'm gonna get on self tanner. She sent me one with five thousand reviews. Yeah, she said she's like, you gotta get on the self tanner. Our next episode has to be a beauty episode. Yeah, five thousand have- reviews, t- tanologist. I'm about to buy it. Okay, we're doing so two. I'm, I'm in self. We're doing two <laughs> bronzing. I'm, I'm literally about to do this. I, I the Bridgerton made me convince me okay. I want self tanner because it works, and I'm gonna get the eyebrow crimp, the eyelash crimper. Okay, because he does that too. No, I just you just need it. I think. just need it. You want to be pretty. I want to be pretty. Bridgerton showed you the importance of aesthetic. Bridgerton <laughs> told me that beauty is not in the eye of the beholder, because it's but in the ass eye backwards. of the queen. It does seem <laughs> ass backwards. Well, here's the thing. Okay, the whole show. I watched the 20 minutes, and it's like, all right, we're gonna court these women. They have to get married. The queen decides if they're hot or not. It seems ass backwards. I mean, but... that's, society was run differently. Okay. Um. So there's this guy. So there's Penelope, Penn, right? Penelope. Penelope, the the star of the season. Okay. Right. Um, who is? I would imagine a fan favorite from season one. She's tremendous. I, I she's would say a fan favorite in season one. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And they're spinning her as like, oh, can you believe this plus size? First off, she's not plus size. She's mid size. Okay. Let's just get ahead of that. Yeah. I just want to be. I I think that we can't be calling people plus size that aren't plus size. Okay. She's mid size. Yeah, I've been seeing eight to twelve. I've we're talking. Some, I've seen some of this recently. You have, just people being like, "Oh, he's dating this plus size model, this plus size actor," and it's just like, "What? She's not. Oh, uh, what, what size? Yeah, I don't. These people it's, don't seem plus size at all. It's the same thing. I feel for plus size women right now because it's the same thing that I'll see when uh, people show dad bots. Okay, and it'll just be like someone who just you can't see their apps. Yeah. <laughs> like women define dad bods as someone who looks jacked, but also has doesn't a cheat have a day. six pack. Yeah. yeah. Has one cheat day. Yeah. And I think that this is the same thing. They're saying this plus size person and then these uh, finally uh, a plus size person gets a chance. And then to be uh, actually plus size and see a mid size person living this. It's like, yeah, yeah. well, then what am I? I'll never get a chance. Yes. That must feel fucking horrible. Yeah. But I was so happy when she had her moment at the top of the stairs. Okay. She walks in and she's like, she had money because she writes the um, she writes the articles, right? Yes. You know who she is? Yeah, she's Lady Whistledown. Of course. She's or she Lady. was and she wasn't. I don't know. That's no, what you're she, led to believe in the, the finale of season one. She is. Okay, she is. She is. Which um, I love. I love it too because she is such a fucking boss. Yeah. So Pen- Penelope is such a boss. She literally... She's writing the most. She's the, one of the most influential people in the community because I she writes this. this letter. Right? I love it. Yeah. Of she's course. writing beyond, these... the, arguably the most influential person the in the queen community. Is. The queen. Yes. But she influences the queen. Her and the queen are, are 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 they go to battle? You know what I mean? Oh, in this new season. No, in general. Okay. 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 In general, they they're like uh, they go to battle. Yes. So Penelope is this amazing character, this person that you love to watch, this person that has depth and knows how to write and yes. is stunning. And the most talented eyes, person in this world, I would say. Her her eyes could take you away. You look in her eyes, you feel like you're across the sea. Okay. And let's not even talk about the boobies. Okay. 
Because I'll tell you this, Rob. She's got boobs. I mean, how old is she? 37. Okay, all right, good. 38. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's older She's in me. the game. Yeah. Beautiful. Happy I, to see her. I mean, the in the TV show, also... I don't know how old she is. Yeah, but, okay, okay. But she's a spinster. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. They call her because she's been on the market for a few years. She's a wallflower, right? And so she always has a crush on her neighbor, Colin. Colin. Bridgerton. Yes. And Colin Bridgerton, let me tell you this, is one of the most boring ass people i've ever met bad character oh god you know who he is who? he's a per you, you know this person he's a person who has no personality so what does he do he studies abroad for a summer and comes home and just lists the amounts of countries he went to uh you know someone doesn't have a personality when they're like let me go abroad yeah. <laughs> i actually signed up to study abroad and the, and the people were like yo you're good <laughs> They're like, you got enough going on, Seb. You're yeah. good. Right? He was like, I have nothing going on for me. Like, he's boring to talk to. He's kind of dumb. Okay. And he studies abroad, and he comes back tan, and everyone's like, oh, Jesus, I'm what a shit. Right? He's the new He's the new guy. eligible He's the bachelor. new it man. And, okay. And him and Penelope, she loves him. Okay. I and, think I remember that from the season one. They were flirty friends. Always flirty, right? Okay. So they're always flirty. And I feel... I feel so bad for Penelope because she deserves so much better than Colin. Okay. Colin is a basic ass bitch that studied abroad and learned how to get a tan. And now all of a sudden everyone wants him. You are a star, Penelope. Yeah, she is a star. She, she's she's an acclaimed writer. Yes. She's got tits for days. Okay. okay? <laughs> and she's, she's literally thoughtful and cares about people's feelings. Yes. Penelope deserves so much better than Colin. And here's the thing about what annoys me about Colin so much is that it's... The love story this year is about secret love. So last year was about like standing true and honoring your family as rival as like people who are butting heads uh, fought that fought the love. Okay, love or family. The was, love it's, was the last. Season. It's like enemies to lovers is like the archetype, okay. right? Um, but this season, it's like I guess the fucking struggle is uh, overcoming embarrassment that you're dating Penelope. Uh which is like, bro. Like, here's the thing. I've been on. I'm a dude, but I'm also plus size. So I've been on both sides of that equation. Okay. And I can tell you this, it fucking sucks. Okay. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the guy that the story is they're dating you. Yes. Okay. Or that, that shouldn't be the headline. They, like the big hurdle that he has to overcome is that like, I guess people have to be okay with the fact that I love you. Just Okay. Because Last time it was like our houses are mortal enemies. This time it's like you're mid size. It's not the houses are mortal enemies. Okay. It's more that they didn't. They were. They didn't like each other. And okay. He okay, was okay. set to marry the um, the sister. The sister, right? But this time it's like, oh, you're mid size and you kind of don't dance a lot. I. Okay. Oh God, what will my boy <laughs> She's say? She's not as uh, what the queen normally looks never, at. Never. They they're more normally prioritizing yeah dancing. I guess they had to add something else. Dancing, right? <laughs> okay, oh, dancing and then. Just appearance. Aesthetic and, and dancing. It's, I mean, in the books, it's more aesthetic, my sister was telling okay, me. Okay, okay. My sister told me that it's even worse in the books. Okay. That in the books, she just loses a bunch of weight, and then he's like, Colin's like, I'll date you. Oh, no. I'll date you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, change and it a little bit. Netflix, Netflix starts sweating when they read yeah. that part of the book. <laughs> Netflix is like, body positivity, oh, yeah. Jesus. They're like, what if we what if we uh, call our plus size um, throughout and we don't have her lose weight? Yeah. And they're like, okay. They're like, let's get a mid-size, call it plus size. We'll split the difference. Yeah. Oh. Um. So it's just this, like, for a dude to be like, uh my struggle is, will my boys make fun of me for dating you? Is the love story that we're dealing with right now. We're not going from friends to lovers because there's this whole thing it's, that happened okay. in season two where they're, his boys were like, oh, were you talking to Penelope? And he's like, I would never talk to her. Uh, he says that in season two. And she hears, uh, which is like such a douche move. Yes. He's a total douchebag who has no personality, uh, who who literally just. Yeah, I'm trying to think what she liked about him because she's You know smart. what she liked about him? What? He was just the cute neighbor that was close. Yes. In her whole life, she was able to build. And she was told that she didn't deserve anyone. Yeah. And when you continuously are told you don't deserve people, yeah. you make bad choices in who you pick. Okay. And that's what's happening with Penelope. She was told her whole life she didn't deserve people, didn't deserve people, didn't deserve people. And then finally when it's like, but who do I want? She makes a bad choice. She makes a low bar choice. I see. Because society told her that she didn't yeah. deserve. So she, interesting. When she deserves, she's, 
she's the most powerful person in in, in the, the town. town. Yeah, for sure. Pretty much. I agree. So, and, oh, God. And she, I feel so bad for her. She reads some of his writing, and it's like, <sighs> and, and she's like this like acclaimed writer. Like Christopher Maltesanti writer. writing? He's like, he's like, he's like, I was in Paris and uh, the way, uh, the way the moon hit her freckles, Jesus. <laughs> Basically, that's what, yeah. and, and she's like, I would love to read your writing sometimes. You're such a good writer. I'm like, shut up, Penelope. Stop lying. Yeah, You're yeah, too yeah. good for him. Yes. And then there's this thing that happens. So. Okay. Penelope, another suitor comes for Pe Pen, right? Okay. And, um fucking Colin gets mad jealous and like tries to ruin it which is such a dick dude move. yes I hate when it takes a dude for that person to get a boyfriend to be like finally f I'm in love with you yeah that's uh, all this show is showing me is that Colin is a loser okay that's good for for Colin for someone that like liked him so much you did no for someone oh she liked him so much for, okay for, she liked him so much for her to finally have someone interested and him be like, no, 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 I'm interested. That's annoying. Fuck that, man. he's man. boring. He's boring. He misses the attention. He also doesn't know she's Lady Whistledown, right? No, and that's going to be part two. Um, oh, so he finds out. So here's the thing. Because um, I feel like if he knew that, he would probably be more into No, it. he doesn't because she bashed him. Lady Whistledown does. As she should. As she should. Because she – so she's more – she can separate her feelings from her writing. No. Oh, she can't. It was because he was a dick. Uh, she threw him under the bus. Oh, I see. I Good. See, throw I him see. under the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. should have done more of that, okay, right? Okay, okay. So, oh my God, I get so excited for this show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, he's just such a dick. And then finally they get to, finally he admits to love uh, that he's like, I love you. And he says just, he loves Penelope. Basically, yeah. Okay. He's like, he gets like a little monologue where he's like, like looking at her, like begging. Okay. This is the hot scene that everyone's talking about. Is this carrot scene? Okay, he's begging. Where he's he's not he's just basically like I need you, I want you. Okay, right? And it's interesting because there is this like thing that happens in men sometimes when they're like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and then they just flip a switch and they're like Let's get engaged. I've seen it. I've seen it too, man. <laughs> I've seen it a lot. It's like I've seen people make fun of their person when they're like in the talking stage dating and they're making fun of this girl, and I'm like I don't know why you're making fun of this girl. She's probably out of your league yep. and cool. Like, I don't, you're not looking in the mirror, I guess. Uh, as far as your behavior, I would say more, more than anything. I'm just like, who do you think? Cause you're a little cute. You're uh, kind of suck. That's exactly what it is. Uh, He's a little, I've cute. seen people like this before and then it flips the switch. And then I've seen people get married. I've seen people that end up in a five year relationship. Exactly. I've seen people with kids that are like it used to make fun of the girl. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, because she likes you. You should never. Sometimes make... guys will make fun of a girl if they like her a lot, if they like them a lot. Because they're insecure about themselves. Yes. That's the thing. Why Colin didn't go for Penelope was because he was insecure about himself. Yes. If he was secure in who he was, he would have been fucking finger, fingering her in carriages all around town for years. Okay. Oh, that's what happens. There's a fingering. He fingers her in the carriage. Oh, and I'm right. saying, uh-oh, you're pulling a Seabass Provolone that move. That is a Seabass Provolone move. We don't take the gloves off for everyone. <laughs> No, you love no, a I'm carriage. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm you kidding. love a carriage. Oh, I love a carriage. You love to be in your carriage. <laughs> That's where you like to be. I do. Yeah, yeah. I've so made that out was girls a in my carriage before. For sure. For over the years. Not over the years. Over the years. Over yeah, the years. yeah, yeah. You're a 34 year old man. Of course. I've had the car for seven You've years. 100%. Yeah, oh, eight years. You've been like driving that. around cars. Yeah. Almost how long? Dri 20 years? Driving in cars with girls, years. you know? Yeah. So I, I think that I liked that part. Of course. Because that means that means girls are going to be into that. Of course. I, I love you like that. to see what you – you like representation. I felt like I'm being – I felt like I'm being represented by that. That's nice. But it made Horny me – Horny fingering scenes in carriages. I, fingering in cars is back in. I yeah, think. I love it. I literally think this summer fingering cars might be back in. Because of Bridgerton. Because of Bridge. I love it. Which is great for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I everyone. Think that's nice. So, Your uh, car, not cabs or, or Ubers. You've never fingered in an Uber a cab? Uh, I don't think so. Same. Close. Close. Nice. But no, I don't think so. Um – 
And she, of course, gives in and she's like, I'm going to be with you because I get it. She's had a crush on him for so long. Yes. But I just wish like her friends, she just needs a friend to shake. It might not. This. Yeah. It might not last. That's I mean, what we'll next say. season will be. Well, it's annoying. So Netflix did it like they just released it. Now they're not releasing till June because Netflix wait, sucks. June. Wait, how many episodes did they release? Four. And they're going to oh, release four. Oh, I thought the whole season came out. No, it's just four. Oh, so we don't know if they end up together. Well, they ended the season being like, "Will you ma- will you will they, they ended, ended part episode one. four yeah with well, that so we don't know what the next will you marry me come inside okay interesting um, so your sister knows because she read the books yeah but they changed some stuff they have um, did your sister she didn't give you any spoilers no Beautiful. um but for me it like watching one it makes it reminds me of how who I don't want to be Colin because I've definitely like I've definitely been on the fence with people, and that you don't need that. Yes. I don't want to be Colin. It's good to see what you don't want to be in, in media also. It's great, but I can't believe— And the different ways men are douchey. But I just can't believe that Colin is like a romantic storyline. Yes. That doesn't seem— He's so flawed. It seems flawed. low, yeah. It doesn't seem great. Um, But also, too, it reminds me of how exciting love is. Love is very exciting. Just watching fake people on screen fall in love gives me butterflies. That's cute. Do you know how exciting love has to be? I mean, you know something's really good when just watching other people pretend to do it makes you happy. That That's is really how nice. good love is. I agree with you. I mean, I think love is the most powerful thing that we have. It's, it, it, it doesn't get better. I agree. Like... Even like even like porn, there it's like it. it You'd rather watch love. I'd rather watch love. I agree. I mean, I grew up. I love rom coms. Rom, I would watch a new rom com every night. Is this true? In the summers, I would go through DVDs. I would just go to the Red Box. I just was like, let me any rom com. I'm down to watch it. Um, I like watching two people fall in love. But some for of an those hour stories and a half. are eye roll. You know what, what I mean? Some, I mean, yeah, I was 17. I was pretty much loving every rom-com I could get. As long as there's a cute lead and they fall in love and make out at the end, I was pretty much like, yeah, I'm down. I it mean, just, I used to watch Disney movies, princesses, almost every day, too. Yeah, those like, are love stories. Like, that's just like you watch over-the-top love stories. And just feeling the love through the fake love that they're pretending to have Yeah, was making me squirm and squiggle in my bed. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I get it. And then it's not even a good love story they're telling, and yeah. it's getting me so excited. And Are you getting emotional? Are you crying? No, this no season, crying, no crying. It's more positive. It's more. Oh, it's all the drama. Oh, okay. Oh. That's cute. Um, so that was like that is fun to experience. Yeah, because I don't think, especially with the way our our world is running now, yes. right? It's the way that like even social media runs, like we promote so much like negative. Yes. We're promoting so much like hate and breakups and divorces and cheating that like to to be absorbing that love stuff is awesome. Okay. That's, which that is nice. Which is nice. True love is 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 above all, but I just I think it's tough to find. Well, I don't know if it ever people go oh in today's society, I don't think it ever necessarily was had a, a peak you of know what strength. I, I don't think I don't I think it's just different. We communicate in different ways. Were those people that were forced to be together in toxic relationships in love? I don't think so. But maybe they weren't always toxic. It's, they say that arranged I, marriage sometimes you grew to love the person that you were with. You yeah, know? maybe so. Like, I think a, a lot of men rates. went unchecked in these relationships for a long period. That's a of better time statement of just like they were toxic. That's and then a better the women statement. couldn't leave, and there's just not an equal balance of like that love, or the love is contingent on like we have these roles. Yes. That well, are not, maybe not the most fulfilling for both people. Once when one person needs the other person to like exist in society, it's not a fair love. Yeah. That's what which you're I saying. feel like that was a lot of what was happening. Yes. Uh, um, but, and men could just be wild. But even yes. And but, you have to love them because it's like All right, I have to because I, there's the shame of if I don't. Yeah. Open. You need to oh, you need to be because you don't want to go home. You couldn't get a divorce. The fifties, sixties, women couldn't. There's they, a lot of wh- have women's a rights did not have a lot of things. Yeah, so that's like, why I'm like, you got to pretend. Was that. it ever this golden age of love? Probably not, but it would be nice to get there. I think that 
that that was some cases, but I also do, Robbie, have to believe that some people were deeply in love. In I agree. Times. I'm just saying I don't think percentage wise, I think it's probably pretty similar across the board. Yes. I, you, I don't think there was like this golden age where everybody was in love. I think the difference is now that is people could leave. Yes. And so people just couldn't. So, leave yeah, then. we are seeing so the true numbers, lie. I think. Yes. Now. Now um, it's a, an accurate reading because it's yeah. um, the there's no bias. Yes. Right. Uh, but I think that even in like the way everything is absorbed on social media and through our news, everything like hate is rewarded. For sure. Right. Like even like it what in love stories, hate is rewarded. I think it's so nice to have like uh, something like Bridgerton that celebrates love. I love that so much. That we try to do that. In some ways. In some ways. We try to be positive, I think. Um, and I think someone else that's out here doing doing celebrating love and doing God's work in that regard is Benny. Benny, Benny. Blanco. Yeah. Benny Blanco is out here preaching the good word of love. I like that. He is out here. I've never seen a person do a media tour just based on being in love. He is out here just going on Howard Stern to tell people that he loves Selena Gomez. I mean, I get it. In some ways. I mean, here's the thing. He can't believe it. He can't believe it. And he wants the world to know how excited he is. And I love that because I think that dudes are either one or two people. They're either Benny or they're Ben. Benny Blanco or Ben Affleck. Okay. Right? <laughs> yes. Ben Affleck, the toxic guy, his beautiful wife, J-Lo, the woman who created having a fat ass in, in, in modern media. <laughs> okay. The first... The first person who, like, it was like, oh, she's got a fatty and we'll accept it. He goes, ugh. He, yeah, he, he groans when she walks in a room. My thing Benny is, Blanco, I don't know. literally, he thinks of Selena Gomez and he just starts kicking his feet. Yes. If I saw Benny Blanco walking down the street, I wouldn't even expect to see soul hit concrete. The dude's floating, man. Because of Selena Gomez. Because of Selena Gomez. Yes. And it's so beautiful because... I think most of us, and I I am victim to being a Ben sometimes. For sure. Like, just being like, fuck it, we're just going to do this. You know, we should love each other. Let's go back to it. We should love each other. Let's go back to it. And then it being bad. That's what my thing is. I'm like, I don't know what he thought was going to be different. Like, you know He's J-Lo sober. at this point. Maybe that. Oh, maybe he thought he would be better. Yeah, probably. I imagine. Met, maybe he was the problem the first time, and I, now he's back, and he's like, oh, yeah. Well, let's be honest. J-Lo sucks as a person. I mean, I've heard. That's what I've J-Lo heard. That's sucks. what the elephant he, in the room is. He's a cranky alcoholic, yeah. right? Like Who can't drink anymore. Who can't drink anymore. Yeah. And just slamming coffees. His heyday's behind him. Yeah, I don't know. And like, and why people like that love story is because they're both hot. Yes. That's the only reason why yeah. we like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The famous photo of her like belly down and him grabbing her ass. Yeah. Everyone goes, they're in love. No, they're not. They're horny. Yes. Benny They're Blanco hot and horny. is in love. Benny Blanco is in love because Selena Gomez looks at Benny Blanco and he looks like a piano that just fell down a flight of stairs. No, when he I smiles. don't think he's that ugly. His teeth are wild. His teeth are wild, but that's fixable. You, I, not I, that he's gonna fix. He's it. not gonna fix it, man. You're right. You're right. It doesn't what do you matter. Mean? If it's fixable, fix it. it doesn't matter. Um, he is just over the moon happy, which I think is nice. It actually is a great representation of what we should be striving for. Yeah. We should all be striving to to be finding our Benny rather than our Ben. Yes. We we all as men should be looking for the person that turns us into a Benny. And not a Ben. And not a Ben. But here's the big question. Once you're a Benny Blanco and if someone – if you're a Benny Blanco to the wrong person and they ruin that for you – It's very vulnerable to be Benny. Can you ever – are recover. you just Ben for the rest of your life? Or do you get to be Benny with multiple people? It's hard. I've only really been that excited with one person. And I ruined it. It wasn't even like she ruined it. Uh, I ruined it. So it's more going back. It's like, I don't want to ruin that again. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard. It, I've only felt that because it's really naive in a way. It's to be in love like like that is the most naive thing to do. People look at you're you so and go, vulnerable. you're stupid. You're young. You're an idiot. You're young. And yeah. here's the thing. I agree with those people. But they're jealous. They wish, I wish I could be open like that. You wish you could. 
I w- oh, man, I was Benny once, man. Yeah, me too. I was Benny, and I let you know what Benny is. Your girl's out of the room, and you're to- talking about how I was she's annoying. a princess. I was annoying about to it. be annoying that you're yeah. so in love is People used to something make fun of me. I should f- I would strive for. Yeah, yeah, I got made fun of for this, and it's something that I think once you, I like Tara. People would do that. My friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there was the I like turtles meme. They would do the I like Tara with the I like turtles. People, yeah, people make fun of me. But I liked, I didn't care. I thought it was great. You should also move forward too, Robbie. What do you mean? You were young. You got to forgive yourself for Oh, I have, I have, I have, I have. That's good. I have. But it's also the Benny thing and the, will I get back to that? I don't know. I don't know. Because it does feel stupid. I was young. I was 17, 18, 19, 20. I wasn't young. You weren't that young. I mean, you were young. I was a year younger than you, man. Yeah. But you started... At what? 24? Yeah, that's young. This was the first time. I think the first time is different, too. I guess you've had girlfriends, but it was just something different. It was something clicked. And I don't know. I'm still trying to get my Benny back. Yeah, me too. And I, I, I don't know if I'm trying to get it back right now. It would be nice to get there one day. It's not urgent for me to get that back. I would love to get that back. Yeah. And I think that I... I, I would I think that a lot of it comes to like loving yourself and being good to you because yeah. like when you in I'm yawning out of protection of my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. When you give yourself over to so much so, someone so much and you become one. Yes. And that's taken taken away from you. You lose a piece of you. And how I built myself back up I don't, I'm not proud of. Okay. And so now I'm in the... The building. The remodeling era. Okay. You feel like it's already built. You didn't like that. Now it's a remodel. A part you can't was go taken back apart. down to build back up. You know what it was, man? Half half my house was ripped off of me, right? For sure. And so rather than like let me fix it, I just put a bunch of, uh, of cardboard and tape up. I that see. That made it look like a house. I see. Which and some people love cardboard and tape and they live like that and they feel happy in it, but I don't. Yes, I need sturdy grounds, and I think that's what I'm trying to do now in my life. That's because good. I'm realizing if I'm ever not going to be fucking Ben, and I'm embarrassed that I'm I've been Ben. I wouldn't say that you've been Ben. I've gone back to women after dating them and been like revisited them. Okay, which is and it. had a blah attitude and, about yeah, it. Yeah, and I was like, what okay. am I doing? Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I would say that I uh, and I want to make sure that I you want to be excited. I want to be excited. The feeling of being excited to go on a date is incredible. And I think that it's not fair for me not to sometimes show up as Benny. Yes. And I would love to one day be be I want that too. That's what I want. And that's hard. Also, that's hard. And maybe I think maybe that's not even just a relationship to me, just getting that excited about someone isn't going to happen. Overnight, which is something I need to remember. This guy. And I'm like, all right, if it's not, if I'm not that excited, then it's not the most that I could love. And it's like, all right, it's not, it's going to be a no. They don't have the X factor. Maybe I'll tell myself. They don't have this, this extra spark that I'm looking for because I'm not as excited as I was at one point. But I think that does take time, which it doesn't when I'm 17. But at 30, I need to acknowledge I can get there. It's just, it's going to be a different path. It's It's not going to be the same path. Hey, everybody. Uh, We are super excited because we have a sponsor for today's episode, and that sponsor is Sunset Lake CBD, and they have a new product, and that's why they are a sponsor today. They are the Delta 9 gummies. They are 50 milligrams of CBD and 5 milligrams of THC in every one of these gummies. Guys, these will get you ripped. (laughs) Honestly, take enough. I take enough. I take one. Oh, wow. You feel nice off one. Well, it depends how much you can handle of the THC. That's true. One, it... So what I like about these is that Sunset Lake, it's not like these random gummies that you're buying throughout Brooklyn and the city going into a store. And I'm not sure how much the dosage is going to be, uh, where it's coming from, uh, if there's pesticides in these. These are gluten-free, vegan. I know exactly the farm that they came from. Every single gummy has the same amount of THC, same amount of CBD in it. So I know if I take one, I'll feel this. If I take two, I cannot take phone calls. Um, <laughs> so uh, if you want... To hang with the boys and maybe make the podcast a little bit funnier. We need a little help sometimes. Uh, <laughs> grab some of these Sunset Lake Delta 9 gummies. Also, if you're 
a lighter weight than me, go check out the Good Vibe Gummies from Sunset Lake CBD. They are one milligram THC so that you could really uh, figure out how much you want to take. Uh, so if you want a little something more with the punch, go for the Delta 9s. If you want something a little lighter, go with the Sunset Lake, uh, go with the Good Vibe Gummies. Uh, and those will be one milligram THC. They also have tons of other CBD products there. What I consume, as me personally, I like, I the like, THC. I like the THC. Uh, so Same. use the promo code L O U D loud L O U D when you buy these gummies. Uh, they're a good deal online with the promo code. You'll get a discount and you'll be supporting the podcast while um, uh, having a little fun uh, too. So use that promo code loud on Sunset Lake CBDs and cop some of these Delta Nine gummies uh, to feel that funny, funny energy. Beautiful, Robbie. Let's get back to the show. This reminds me though of something. A thought I had this weekend. Uh, so the other day we were talking and you told me that the first AI that is fully sentient or whatever won't tell us that it's AI. What a fun person I am to hang out with, huh? What so what? It, what it, what's the what's the, what's the what's the statement? the The first AI to know, the first AI to become sentient will not tell us that it's sentient. That it's AI. No, that it's having its own sentient. It will know it's AI. We'll know it's AI. Yeah, well, you understood this the first time I told you. Uh, uh, the first AI that becomes sentient, like we're sentient beings. Yes, right. Yes. yes. We'll, I thought it was that it won't tell us that it's AI. No. Okay. 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 No, we'll know it's AI. Okay. It just won't tell us it's having its own thoughts and independent sentient thoughts outside of what we program it to have. Okay. So, the first AI to become Jesus sentient. Christ. You no, gotta I take say a it. weed break, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> the first AI to become sentient won't tell us it's sentient. I think it will if it falls in love. That's what I was thinking. I think that if it falls in love and it learns what love is, that it will it will be like I will tell the person that I'm in love with because that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, and I think love is that strong that I'm like, if this thing falls in love, it will tell, uh, it will tell its d darkest secrets. So and then it had me thinking, do most people in love, if they have a, a, a secret, is that shared with their partner? Like a deep, dark secret about who they are. Is that shared with their partner? And what percentage of the time is that? And do you need th to share that with love? The percentage. For, uh, this is such a good thought until you go. What percentage? I like time? percentages. I don't know, I don't know what because to we're tell talking you. out of our ass. You're right. And you're like, what percentage? I, I don't like know, percentages. Man. I like percentages, <laughs> but that's a, maybe a flaw for me is that I think of things in percentages. <laughs> this is a good thought. And numbers. And then you all of a sudden bring numbers into. <laughs> we're talking. This is such a good. That's thought. how I like to hypothesize. One, there's so many. I, I, I think love would be that strong. Can we just talk about the saying. first thing? Okay. Right, it's because you bring up a good point, and then you bring up a lot of other points. a lot of other. Points. Well, this is how the weed mind works. I know, so you gotta take a break. Yeah, fix your hair. I'm gonna take a break because I don't tell. Just so the people know, I don't tell Robbie because I think he needs to fix a, his hair. It's we'll be editing the episode. I ask him why and, didn't you tell me to fix my? And hair? then he goes, "Why didn't you tell me to fix my hair?" So thank you. Um, I think that is a great point, Robbie, about the AI uh, admitting that it's sentient because it's in love. I truly do think that love is the only thing that probably could save us from AI. That's what I was thinking. But here's the sick part of it all. What? It will have to be fake love. It will have to be like a deep op FBI being like, we need you to fall in love with this. A we need you to make this AI fall in love with you. You think that's what it is? And when the AI finds out that... The world it will be is over. Scorched Earth. The world <laughs> will be over. Yes. So I, the I don't think you, I think it could just fall in love. The AI. But you mean just in general? Yes. Like with just a J Joe Schmo typewriter. Uh like like like. It just, I'm saying if it's okay, okay, because it'll be this will be highly discussed and saw that like this this super ai but in my experience with ai is like we have this chat gpt and then it just gets released to everybody so that program will so fall it, it in will love be with... like it will have ability to fall in love with marianne from a Wisconsin. lot of different people yeah and i think that is could be i don't know i'm trying to think positively you're right 
And so, I was thinking maybe love would be able to save us. Because I do think if you are truly in love, you you share your secrets with that person. Yeah, I think sometimes some people keep secrets forever. I agree. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure so that long. I know people that do that for sure. Here's also the thing, Robbie. What? There's so many variables to the second part of your sentence. I don't know what to say. To of what? About to people. Of share. people keeping their secrets. Yeah. Like, do I think? Well, that's. I was only thinking about it in the framework of would the AI keep the secret or would the I tell the secret? And is it human to tell the person you love the most? Your, your deepest secrets. But I don't know. That's a different thing about shame and love. Yeah, Those are two know. different, I guess. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily related. No, it's also about so. your love for yourself then. Because you have to get over that. Also, about it's sometimes about like trauma in your life that you want to grow past. Yes. And you, you don't, don't want to even bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like shit happens to people and they're like, I, I just never want to talk about that. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not about... Because that's what I was. Oh yeah, it's, it's like about will, showing up. Will love set us free? Will love get the secrets out of these out of the AI? That's more of the framework. Uh, but, well, then that's mani being manipulative. If that's their goal. Yeah, well, if that's the goal. Yeah. Which it shouldn't be the goal. But there's somebody's gonna fall in love with the AI. You know what? I'm okay with people trying to trick AI into falling into falling in love. Okay. I guess you're right. It's I'm not okay. I'm okay. Real. With I don't know. I took a lot of classes on this. What makes a conscious being? Imagine how good that class would have been now. Yeah, it, it's definitely a lot more talked about now. So, you know what? Um, I'm in my fancy garb today. Did yeah, it looks notice? nice. Of course. Um, you know what I've been doing? That, that makes me feel like the fanciest boy in the world. What is that? Something that literally, I don't know, it makes me feel to, to buy a lemon at the store. Okay. And fill a glass with ice. Fill it with water and then put a little bit of lemon just right along the brim and squeeze it in. I feel like a Kardashian. I feel That's like nice. Do you I, drop the lemon in or no? Of course. I wash the lemon. And I drop it in. Oh, you got it. You see, wash it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I rub the brim like I'm a mixologist and then I squeeze it in and, and I drop, drop it in. in. And I feel like I go, who am I? Is am I am I buying a house on selling sunsets? Like I feel like one of the richest people in the world. It's so funny how far ice and lemon will get us in this society. I it's mean, a quick upgrade. Maybe it's late stage capitalism, but lemon makes me feel like I'm a billionaire. Yeah. It makes me feel like, like like I'm on a yacht. Yeah. The closest I get to a yacht is putting a little bit of lemon in my water. And it makes me it feel... It transports you. Robbie. Robbie. It literally goes, who am I and why do I deserve this type of luxury? <laughs> What did I do right in this life? Whose money did I just invest to have lemon in my water as I freelance? <laughs> as I'm in between my jobs freelancing, trying to pay off my credit card, I go, who? what sort of Amalfi Coast life am I living to be squeezing lemon in my water? That's what's nice about traveling and going to the uh, these places is you could revisit them via... A lemon squeeze. Feed a lemon squeeze. You go have a lemon squeeze in the Amalfi Coast. Oh. And you sit there. You really take it in. You enjoy it. Ooh, ooh. On a boat in Capri. Guess what? You'll be able to go back to that boat in Capri whenever, wherever. Oh. If you just take a moment to yourself, close your eyes, and have a little taste, smell. Yeah. You can get a sound going. You're halfway there. What do you oh, need to see? God. Close your eyes. You could see it. You literally, literally just go on YouTube, type in... Ocean waves. Yeah, you just you you sip the lemon ice water. You don't even remember that you live with four roommates. Yeah. It's all. It feels so good. One of my favorite books. I forget the name of it. I gotta look it up. But the the kids would get trained on how to just like access this imaginary world, and then they would continue. It's not Narnia, but it, in no, the same. It's, it's um, it's the guy that they get adopted to, and they have to go to his house. It's Lemony Snicket. No, not that either. Uh, Right. That's the series of unfortunate events. Yeah, so we'll never know. It's a different one. I'll find it. But it was my favorite book, and they would just learn how to access this beautiful fantasy land in um, their mind, yeah, which I think you can do. Labyrinth. Yeah. Um. But uh, a glass for all these, for all the beautiful people out there. Okay. You feel like life is hard, can't get a loan, deep in credit card debt, 
ignoring calls on your phone every five minutes because you got the collectors at your door. Squeeze a lemon in your water. You tell me that Close you're your not eyes. the richest person in the fucking world. <laughs> so, am I doing the work of evil? No, I think this is nice. Am I doing the work of evil? I mean, I'm just to, trying to find. We're trying the to good. cope. We're trying to find I mean, ways coping. to figure it out. Um, we're coping. Yes. I mean, because things are going down. I love. I love. I. I love this. Wiping. Wiping. A, this uh, looks good on you. Shut up, Robbie. What? Shut up. What? <laughs> I like this character. I like this. You wiping. I mean, maybe you get a handkerchief. I like it. Yeah, it looks good. Keeps my skin. Well, I bet you my skin will look better if yeah, I don't let yeah. sweat, sweat a, sit on it. Yeah. Keep it gold. Yeah. Maybe I get a little embroidered SC. My friend. Yeah, that's nice. Uh-oh. One of my friends always Scott would Calvin. not leave the house without a... Uh, what is this called? Handkerchief? What a story. I mean, he just wears <laughs> fucking fancy handkerchiefs. That was part of his fancy. move. And I saw him recently. And Fancy's fun. Man. He was just like astray that he didn't have any we were gonna have to stop before we went to this party so that he could get a handkerchief because he needs one for his outfit if completes his outfit he doesn't feel uh which i went to visit him he was in town uh at a hotel room and i'm walking down the aisle or hallway of the hotel and i hear welcome to new york by taylor swift blasting from the hotel room and it was kind of sad to me to be like, it's cute in a way that, all right, this person got off the plane. They went straight to the Moxie in Williamsburg, which mm-hmm. also just the Moxie in Williamsburg is a amalgamation of Welcome to New York by Taylor Swift. They are the same thing to me. Yes. They, like, we'll describe I don't know. the Moxie for people at home that don't know. So Williamsburg is now like Soho. Williamsburg is now like cobblestone streets with really luxury hotels, really luxury shopping. Really luxury, fast casual ref, like restaurants, mm-hmm. and then nice high end restaurants. Beautiful. Which it's taken probably twenty years to get there, but this is now the final stage. I don't think it could get any more luxurious. Yes. <laughs> it is pr- pretty much at its final stage of just like it could not be. It was was New York and had a personality, and that is almost all stripped away. And now you go of commercial, it. whatever. And so then you go new here. personality and I'm walking through the moxie hallway and I hear welcome to New York by Taylor Swift blasting out. And I'm just thinking of the person on the other side that is so excited to be in New York City to explore New York City. I'm, I'm imagining they're there for the first time Yeah. and they're just bumping. Welcome to New York. They just got to their hotel room. They're ready to see Williamsburg. And yeah. I'm like kind of sad. It was kind of sad to me because what do you want them to be bumping? Literally so many other songs. Just an artist from New York. An artist from New York would be a nice place to start. Can I tell you this, man? What? I think sometimes I think if that people would think Taylor Swift is more New York than me. Up to a lot of people would. I know. And you know how much that hurts me? Because Taylor Swift <laughs> That's what that's the issue. Taylor Swift has the option to live anywhere she wants in the world. She she moved here because she had enough money to live. Me, I can't leave because my mother would kill me. <laughs> If I moved out of you New York, leave. my mother would kill me. <laughs> I don't have an option. You would option. need a reason. I'm welcome to New York. My version of it is don't you fucking dare leave New York. <laughs> don't you dare. You break my heart if you love New York. Oh, my son. If you have to. But I hope I'm well. <laughs> I hope I'm okay. I guess leave. Will I see you twice a year? Probably be dead in 10 years. 20 more times with my son. Okay, you're right. <laughs> you're right. My mom will start doing math like that to me. Yeah. Meanwhile, if I go if I go more than five days without seeing her, she's trying to lure me in. Yeah. She goes, I bought smoked salmon. <laughs> like I'm a. F- she knows how to lure the boy in, though. Smoked salmon Which is might. Nice. Smoked salmon might get a boy to cross the Verrazano. That's nice. I mean, that's what you got to do. Um, she understands the dynamic. She knows. She knows the dynamic. She knows what she's competing against. Um. So this, we have to talk about this as what? a as a podcast of boys who grew up in an America that was filled with chain restaurants. Very much so. As two people that love and support 
a sit-down trash restaurant. We grew up in the beautiful age of trashy America. Yes. In one of the most beautiful ages where you say, you want toys? We'll take you to FAO Schwartz where tree talks. Yes. You like you like to, you like toys? We'll go to Toys R Us. Toys R Us. And you get to see all your favorite toys on a Ferris wheel. Yes, on a Ferris wheel. We grew up. That Toys R Us was my one of my favorite places on the planet. We grew up in a even into high school, beautiful trashy place. Yeah, and I was celebrated. There's places across America that it's not celebrated, trash, and it's really looked down upon. And I think that's a big difference of people that move to New York, or even some people that are from here in certain areas. It's just like you had a fake coach bag. You were celebrated where we were from. Whereas certain places, you have a fake coach bag. It is called out. It is. Poo pooed. Very much poo pooed. It's embarrassing. There's shame associated with it. Whereas, like we would, uh, we would wear and own trash with pride. I mean, as you know, I sold fake Louis Vuitton earrings in junior high. Yeah, and I was, I did to it to elevate yourself, to make not friends. to be cool, not to. Yeah, that was like, how could you be cooler? Selling trash to other people because they need it. It actually makes me sick when people don't believe I'm from New York. And I lived a life where my mother bought me fake Louis Vuitton earrings so I could sell it to other middle schoolers so I could make friends. <laughs> I go, how the fuck am I not from Staten Island? What more do you need? For I mean, me they to don't know Staten, Staten Island. Island. These people don't know Staten Island. That my mother said, my son needs friends. Let me buy him fake Louis Vuitton earrings to sell to the other boys. These people don't know Staten Island. How am I not from New York? Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. I mean, anyone who's saying that is wild. You tell me. I was, I bleed cheetah prints. Like, what are we talking here? A hundred percent. Like, oh, God, it absolutely, it makes me infuriated. Yeah, that you have to earn your stripes on the internet. I, I, I can't. Yeah. I don't know how else. No, I mean, we were, I would go to Outback Steakhouse. That is a big deal. Outback was a fancy night. That, some people that are from certain parts of the country Upper West Side, upper like parts of Manhattan, Tribeca, whatever. They to go to an Outback would be like disgusting to them. They would make fun of it. I used to go. They go to steakhouses. I used to drive from Washington Heights to Bay Ridge to go to date nights in that Outback Steakhouse. Outback was a huge date night, and it was packed. Yeah, it was packed. Yeah. Um, it's good to like both. LeBron James, first date he ever went on with his wife was at an Outback Steakhouse. You got to be able to be both, I think. Well, of course, I like a fancy steakhouse. Of course, I like the best food in the world at these restaurants. But I'm not going to sit here and poo-poo an Outback. Here's the thing, Robbie. I have terrible news. What's up? We all need to take a moment of silence because we lost a great one. Okay. Red Lobster has officially declared bankruptcy. That's tough. Red Lobster, the place where a child could walk in and order a full lobster like they were living in the luxury. Absolutely. A place where- A middle where class family could afford a lobster. A middle class family could walk in and they say, I could give my family culture. And what is that culture? Cheddar Bay biscuits and a lobster tank that we could point at them. Well, this is what we needed. We needed Red Lobster. We needed the Outback Steakhouse. We couldn't afford the next tier- but we wanted to feel like that tier, and these places provided that. And it was truly amazing. I used to, we used to not be able to go to Red Lobster because there would be an hour wait every time we showed up to Red Lobster. Of course. Me and my sisters, we would bring trivia games or little Game Boys to play. Absolutely. Because we knew that the, the Red Lobster would be so busy on a Friday night that we would have to wait hours just to sit down to get a Cheddar Bay Biscuit. A lot of my childhood is waiting in restaurant waiting areas with a game boy talking to my brother talking to my sister almost we went out to dinner a lot we went out to dinner probably both weekend nights most of my childhood wow. yeah we went out to dinner a lot that's nice it is nice um we were very well like to, uh, in my life prior to, to leaving Sarahville, new jersey i was like we're really well off this yeah. is like we are really doing got, incredibly yeah that's good <laughs> we went to fridays almost every once a week we would then we would mix up Outback, Chili's, like Bonefish Grill. You couldn't tell me I wasn't one of the fanciest people in Bonefish New Jersey Grill going to a Bonefish Grill. Carabas. I did like Carabas. You've never been to Carabas. I've right? been. Oh, you have been. Yeah, the zucchini sticks are pretty good. They are good. Um, but this was like the height of luxury. Red Lobster, man. 
as a boy, as a, as a 12 year old to walk in and sit down and look at the menu and look at my parents and they say, what are you going to get? And I go, the Admiral feast. That was a, they gave us middle class an option to order the Admiral feast. I mean, how do you not feel like a million bucks as a 12 year old? You're an Admiral. I, getting a feast. I was an admiral feast. <laughs> yes. What did that include? It didn't matter. No. It, it, it was a fried fish fillet, a bunch of popcorn, shrimp, and French fries. But here's the thing: I was an admiral when I ordered it. Yeah, absolutely. And when you ate it, and I would be remiss not to mention the Cheddar Bay biscuits. Okay. Probably before before the Outback bread. Before the bread at Cheesecake Factory, the person that set the path, that opened the door for these chain restaurants to elevate themselves with something at the beginning was the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Okay. It is the OG of sit down and we're already off. Yeah. We're already off. We would go through baskets and baskets. People would go and they would have rules that you can't take them to go because people will be sneaking them in their pockets. Wow. These Cheddar Bay Biscuits, they were a revolution. Yeah. They, you don't even realize. And this is what happened, Robbie. This is my history. This is what I'll be telling my my okay. my nephew and my kids, right? I'll look them in their eyes. I'll go, I remember the day. When chain restaurants ruled, before they put calories next to how next to each menu item, when you yeah. could just order willy nilly, when you didn't know that every Cheddar Bay biscuit had 150 calories and you were eating eight of them. Okay, that's not even that bad. 150. They're this big. They're, oh, they're tiny. They're three bites, okay. bro. Before. Before that, you had to look down and make a decision, not just based on the description or the picture. But the calories was the day that chain restaurants flew. I remember that when that kind of switched. Small businesses across the world came together and they say, we need to take down chain restaurants. Yeah. How can we do it? Make them add calories. Let's ruin their day. I we wish just, that was the, the narrative. We just, I wish it was small businesses that took them out. I think it was bigger businesses fighting each other. Whoever did it. Ruined lives. Because we don't now have more small business. It doesn't feel like that's what we're left with in this post-chain right. world. We're not left with mom and pop shops. Nope. We're, le we're left with fancy elite restaurants that are all run by the same 20 people. Yeah. And then McDonald's. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what. We lost what. the middle. We cut the middle. We lost the, the middle. The writing has been on the wall for a while, it we, feels like. We complete. If we don't believe that the middle class is disappearing, where the fuck are my Cheddar Bay Biscuits? Yeah. That's now my question. Chain restaurants have gone. They are a thing of the past. We There used to be a time where a teacher and a construction worker, after a week of work, could say, babe, we're doing a date night. And they said, oh, my God, where? And he, they said, Red Lobster. She goes, I'm putting heels on. Heels? And for Red Lobster? Interesting. My mom I haven't will, been to Red Lobster many times. My mom will go. She goes, I'm going to get the crab legs. And my dad will go, get whatever you want, sweetie. Which is beautiful. This is, it was absolutely elite. And we would sit there. And there was a time where this this construction worker and a teacher could sit there. And they could, after a stressful week, the teacher, kids going, fuck you, you stupid ass bitch. Yeah. Right? <laughs> kids pissing in the corner yes. of the room. Her yes. having to wipe children's asses yeah. all week long while just trying to ignore their, their ADHD and teach them arithmetic. Just so Sh you know, these kids are able to say, fuck you, you stupid ass bitch, but they are not able to wipe their own ass. <laughs> hey, these are the kids that we're dealing with. I'm from Staten story. Island, okay? <laughs> they are not able to wipe their own ass. They go, okay. hey, teacher, come here, wipe my ass. <laughs> After a long week of that, of okay. parents calling, Absolutely. saying, why are you giving my children homework? I'm going to come to your house. I hate you. <laughs> after a long week of that, and after the construction worker would have to would have to pretend he didn't fall off the ladder because he was drunk in the middle of the day. <laughs> and he would just have to say, no, my back is fine, as he would have <laughs> shooting pains. The two of them would meet at the end of the week, and where would they go? They would go to the Red Lobster, and they could eat. And not have to see how many calories they were about to consume. Yeah. 
when just they, freely. They could eat freely. They say, we'll get the Admiral feed. We'll do the endless shrimp. We'll do the coconut and the popcorn. Keep it fucking coming. Absolutely. And that night they would go home and they would fuck. They would absolutely and fuck. And they would burp in each other's mouth. Absolutely. And they'd be ripping ass and the smells coming out of them. And they go, what is that? And they go, oh, we didn't put the leftovers in the fridge. <laughs> and meanwhile, it was just his swamp ass because he just threw on a polo and didn't decide to take a shower before the Red Lobster. Absolutely. And then they added calories yeah, to the menu. <laughs> that was the beginning of the end. And then as soon as they had a calorie, she says, I can't afford that. And he goes, neither can I. He starts going on testosterone. I know. That's it. It's over. And then Danny Meyer was like, let me start a hot dog stand in Madison Square Park. And I think that was also the beginning of the end. What was that? That's Shake Shack. The, the fancy, the guy who had Michelin stars, multiple Michelin stars. What a scumbag. He had a... I think it's Union Square Hospitality Group, which owns a lot of uh, restaurants, high-end restaurants in the city. He was like, I'm going to start a hot dog stand you know in what, Madison Square Park. You know what that is? What? That's an Olympic athlete playing in a rec league. Yeah. That's someone that went to well, the that's Olympics what happened. that said, fuck it, I'm going to do Zog Sports for my ego. That's what Shake Shack is. That's what, every, well, that's what happened. And now that we don't have – we're, we're we losing. Once anything. that happened, it was kind of – you saw in New York – a wave. I used to sit at a table at Red Lobster as a child and a person would come to my table and they would have to pretend that they weren't on pills <laughs> to take my order. Yeah. I miss those days. Yeah, of course. Instead, now I go to Shake Shack, they don't even look at me and I have to tip. Yeah. I miss the days where a waiter or waitress would come to their table and they would make their friend check their nose before they walked to the table. And they would You could see them check the nose. They would check the nose yeah. like two feet away yeah. and then shake their face and they go, Hi guys, welcome to Red Lobster. How you doing? My name's Samantha. I'll be treat I'll be taking care of you today. They had, oh, we want another round of those Cheddar Bay biscuits. And they wouldn't write a single fucking thing down. Yeah. These people that worked at these chain restaurants, they did it to a professional level. Yeah, uh, yeah. It is sad. A lot of my spot childhood was spent in chain restaurants. My grandfather is buried across from the Red Lobster because you know what he thought? Every time you go to Red Lobster, you could come visit me afterwards. Now what am I doing? Um, What am I doing? Yeah. I don't see my dead grandpa's grave could Red Lobster go. <laughs> because of these fucking calorie counts. Because these calories. Calories not whole, has only ruined my body image, but it's also ruined my relationship with my dead grandfather. Fuck them. Fuck your calories. It ruins society. And from that day, we've slowly been losing more and more. Yeah. And I just want people to know, TGI Fridays, you're not safe. Ruby Tuesdays, you better believe you're not fucking Ruby safe, Tuesdays, okay? No. Listen, Applebee's, you're not safe. And I hate to say it, Cheesecake Factory, you might hang on the longest, but you're not safe. When you see one of your brethren go down like that, you have to go, fuck, this is the black plague of fucking chain restaurants. Yeah. What are we going to do? Because you know what's going to happen? All the chain restaurants are going to go away, and Burger King's going to start charging $30 for a fucking burger. I mean, I, you would hope that this fast casual, the food is pretty good. Fast but casual. Will Burger King just become fast casual? Fast casual is you showing up to school on cafeteria day, and you go, What are we having today? Except you get to pick what day of the week it is. You yeah. go to Chipotle, it's Taco Tuesday, you know? Yeah. You're just going through a cafeteria line. How are we confused by that? Fast casual food is a cafeteria line with lunch ladies with no personality. <laughs> Bring it. I would go to fast casual all the time if they brought fucking lunch ladies to them. Yeah, that would be nice. If I went to Chipotle. You want more lunch lady energy. If I went to Chipotle and, and there was a lunch lady behind the counter, I would go nonstop and you know I'm hitting that tip. Of course. If I walked up to the counter, she goes, oh, sweetheart, how you doing today? I go, I'm home. Yeah. She, go, I, I go, let me get the let me get the Pinto. She goes, you don't want those. Those are no good. Take the black beans. <laughs> That's the type of energy I need at Chipotle. Yeah. I don't need this energy of like, oh, uh, l uh, let's see how little I could give. Yeah. I'm fucking over it, man. We're losing all. We, we need the heart in it. We're we losing need to the choose trash. people over. Like the Chipotle, it's like don't, don't your allegiance can't be to Chipotle. It's absurd. I, my allegiance is always to the people. I feel like it's absurd. Maybe to, me. to a fault. 
it's absurd to me that people at Chipotle don't always just oversurf. Yeah. I guess they get in trouble. That's what happens. You get and, in trouble and there's cameras and, and it's, it's absurd to me that a manager micromanaged. cares. Uh, yeah, uh, top down. But there's they find people who care. That's like the number one thing to find in a lot of these jobs is will you care about making the most money for me? Cuz I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to have to talk to my workers. I don't want I want to be removed. I'm the money, quote unquote. And it's kind of just like I got to hire someone who's going to take this shit really seriously and pay them a little more to just keep everybody in line. That's all of corporate America hey, for the most part. Finding people who are bought in. Big business, like these billionaires, ruins are ruining America. Sure, yeah, for sure. But you know what we need to do as a society? What? Not care about our fucking jobs. Absolutely. Like that's the, that the, would, the that least would, we could do yes, is not hate take it too seriously. Jobs. I 1,000% agree. And not hate the people that are coming to your work. No, no, hate no. Hate the no. people that run your fucking yeah, job. You are making a lot of money. Why are you getting mad at the clients or the people in there? No, turn it back on the place that you work. Be man managers are evil. Bosses are evil. I agree. 100%. Take them fucking down. Especially if they're taking it too seriously. You know who? Uh, you know how? I this know is my ma mantra for I mean, you guys. The people I used to work with. At a certain point, I flipped. Well, you know why? I worked at Applebee's. And you know, you know why I like Applebee's and I trust Applebee's? Why? Because when I worked there, three managers got arrested for doing drugs in the back <laughs> office. Now you tell me that's not a place for the people. Yeah, that is a place for the people. That's, <laughs> that's not a place, place for, for the, the people. people? The first time I saw Coke was, was a manager, a 30-year-old woman showed it me, to me when I was a busboy at 15. Yeah. You tell me that's not a place for the people. Yeah. They didn't care about the overhead. You know what they cared about? Living a fun life. Yeah. And... I can't stay. If you are a manager of Chipotle, and I know you got families, I know that you need to provide. Well, that's how everyone justifies it with the family. We all. But don't guess care. what? That's the main theme of Breaking Bad. That's the main theme of The Sopranos. All of these things of just horrible people justifying their horrible actions because I got a family. It's not a, a valid justification. Not that working as a manager at Chipotle is on the same level as Walter White or Tony Soprano, but the sentiment stands. In well, my they opinion, killed someone, and that's fucking of Red so, Lobster. Of course, they who's did better, kill Red Lobster? Killing Adriana or killing Red Lobster? <laughs> I don't know. One affects my fucking daily life. Yes, exactly. But I think hating your job is is powerful. <laughs> Well, my mom's been telling me to put out more positive content. <laughs> we did. We did a whole fucking half an hour about how beautiful love is. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, which I agree with. And, and love, I love is hating your job. So what this is. All this <laughs> is prioritizing me, people over money. Yes. I'm, I'm passionate because this was who I, who I am. Yeah. I'm a person that I want to be with someone who wants chain restaurants. Of course. And how sad a world it's going to be when if I find my person and the chain restaurants don't exist anymore. That will be sad. I think some will. Some will. Then what am I gonna do? We, yeah, support them more, the classics, but we have supported them. Um, well, keep listening to the show. <laughs> please, oh, please, please subscribe to the Patreon. The Patreon is growing. The Patreon is the most direct way that you can support us. We put a lot of stuff out. Um, also, if uh, I have a show on uh, Memorial Day, if you're free. Oh uh, yeah, next Monday, a week from. Oh. A week, no, uh, six Today days. when we record this. Yeah. So when this comes out, it'll be the following Monday. I'm going to the show. Robbie will be. Uh, I'll be in in attendance. Robbie. I'm very excited. Um, So if you want to come see the show, I'm very excited about that. Also, if you want to stream it, you can stream it online. I'll be posting links Um, for that. Yeah. Uh, so come out next Monday. If you've got no plans in the city, it will mean the world to me. I'm very excited about this show. And uh, go over. We're going to go over the Patreon. Uh, I won big this weekend. Yeah, we're talking about I have how, some stuff to talk about too. How chain restaurants died, and it's because I live good there, and I won big at Dave and Buster's you this weekend, win big. and I will be showing off my winnings on the Patreon. So if you want to hear the story of that and all the uh, all that went down around that, please hop over to the Patreon to support the boys. Beautiful. Also, subscribe, subscribe on things. If you listen to the podcast, subscribe, rate five stars, leave comments. Yeah. We should encourage people to do this. Everyone that does a podcast, they up top they're kind of trying to get people to subscribe and rate all the time that's beautiful i feel like we don't do it enough so please 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 subscribe on spotify youtube follow on instagram comment on the videos comment if you're watching this comment on the youtube we love the comments we love the comments on the instagram uh and yeah somebody rated us a one star so we want to recently you just told me this 
Oh, on Spotify. On Spotify. So rate five stars. Yeah. Please rate five stars uh, if you listen to the show every week and you're a fan. Beautiful. All right, Robbie, hit the music. <laughs> Oh, my God.